Okay, phoneme isolation. This is sort of that first skill in phonemic awareness. And we think about phoneme isolation, sometimes it involves activities where we ask a child to isolate the initial or identify the initial sound in a word. Sometimes we ask them, what's the first sound you hear in the word cat or, or, or bed? This one's asking them to identify the first sound in b, in that in a bed, it's a b. Or what's the medial sound or middle vowel sound that they hear or the end sound or final sound. So any activity that involves the child identifying initial, middle, or medial, or end, or final sounds in a word, that's a, a phoneme isolation activity, and that's definitely falls under phonemic awareness, basic phonemic awareness. Now, now remember that. Anytime we're isolating phonemes and, and identifying in, initial, middle, and end phonemes in a word, that would fall under phoneme isolation, and that is basic phonemic awareness. Now let's read this question and see if you can spot it. Everyone, I want you to take one minute. I want you to read it to yourself. On your mark, get set, go. Unpause the video, unpause. Now, in order for this to work, team, in order for this relationship to work, uh, you need to pause and read and maybe you need to take two minutes to read it. Maybe you only need 30 seconds to read it, but you need to read it, yeah? And then I can continue and talk and you can you can learn and we can learn together, okay? So, so you've read it, then let's talk about it. It says, which of the following students is demonstrating the specific type of phonological awareness known as phonemic awareness? So this question here tells you what they're looking for. It's saying, hey, this is a, this is a phonemic awareness question, right? And we know that in terms of phonological awareness, phonemic awareness is that advanced skill. Phonological awareness has to do with that ability to hear sounds and similarities in words, and we can break it into the word level, the syllable level, the onset and rhyme level, and, and then there's the phoneme level, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for an activity that falls under the phoneme level. So we got to look at these right here. All these are activities. So what do I mean by an activity? Well, you're a teacher, but you may not be a preschool teacher or a kindergarten teacher. All these are activities that you might see in a preschool or kindergarten classroom. Now, if you're a kindergarten teacher, you know this because you've probably done all these, right? So each one of these is something that, that might happen on an everyday basis. For example, here, hey, a student who after being shown a letter, uh, a letter of the alphabet can orally identify it corresponds with sounds. That's in that specific activity. Now, what is this? They're matching up a letter with a sound. Now that sounds like letter sound correspondence. It's actually, it's actually, um, it's, I think it's closer to the alphabetical principle, but the alphabetical principle technically is basic phonics. So. We're doing some type of basic letter, letter sound correspondence, right? That's not involved in phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness is just a, a sound thing. And A is describing letter sound correspondence, basic phonics, or, or possibly the alphabetical principle, okay? Which we'll talk about in a little bit. So we can cross that one off, okay? Because we're just doing sound and this one's got letters and sounds. Cross that one off. How about these ones right here? The student, uh, Possibly this is happening in your classroom right now, in your kindergarten classroom. Student who listens to the words sing, ring, fling, and hang, and can identify that hang is different. So what are they doing? Uh, they're showing something called phoneme discrimination. They're being able to tell when something is similar and different. In this case right here, they're able to tell that these are the same. They have the same ending. And this one has a different one, a different type of ending. This would be uh, identifying similarities and differences of, on a word level, right? And notice how they say they're listening to the words. They're making observations on a word level. Now we're looking for things involving phonemes within words. So that wouldn't be it. This is describing an activity for, phoneme, for phonological awareness on a word level. So cross it out. How about this one right here? A student can, after hearing the word hat, can orally identify, oh no, let's not do that one. Let's save that for the end. <laughs> I mean, we could do that one, but then we get to the answer, right? 
let's let's say that for let's do D. A student who listens to the word magazine and can determine that it contains three syllables. Magazine. That is definitely a syllable level activity, right? Okay, the correct answer is C. A student who, after hearing the word hat, can orally identify that it ends, or its final phoneme, it ends with the sound T. So what is that, act, that activity that they're doing? That's the, the answer. Well, think about this activity. This activity, especially the ending part, they identify uh, the end sound. They're doing phoneme isolation. That's a phoneme isolation activity. Remember, phoneme isolation is identifying the beginning sound, the medial sound, the end or final sound in a word. And that would definitely fall under uh, phonemic awareness, right? Remember how we've done our, our friend? Remember our, our friend in the cafe? There's our friend. And our friend is surrounded by others that maybe not are our friend at that at the current time, right? Well, we're looking for a phonemic awareness activity, something to do with sounds. And remember, we're in we're um, we're we're identifying individual sounds and in words. So if that's all we knew, right? Let me show you a trick or or one way to think about it, because that's what we're looking for. Phonemic awareness. Let me get my uh, white out here and show you. So I'm going to just erase all this because it's not important. Just imagine we're just looking for something that involves phonemic awareness. Now I'm going to look at these here. I'm just going to, I'm going to get rid of some of this stuff. Oops, not that. This one involves letters of the alphabet, right? Not really, we're doing phonemic awareness and we don't need letters for that. So that one's out. This one right here, look at these words. It's working with words, ring, sing, ring, fling, right? That's really a rhyme. Can, you can see that right away. Sing, ring, fling. So that would be basic phonological awareness and rhyming words. This one right here, they're listening to the word magazine and, and they're breaking it into uh, syllables. That's really... Really, that's that's a syllable thing. And if we look at the right answer, this is what this is that what's important. We erase all this. It's the only one. Can you see it? It's the only one that's working with an individual sound. Look at that. Look at it closely. You see how it's the only thing having to do with an individual sound. So if you knew your friend had to do with individual sounds, that's who your friend is. Uh, phonemic awareness. You're going to look for an activity involving something to do with an individual sound. See how I got that answer? Okay. It's a nice problem. This one is from these two exams. Let's uh, quickly look at it. It's from the new Foundations of Reading Test 190 and the old Foundations of Reading Test, the 90. So these are both really good exams to take a look at. Really, both really good exams. You can, you can go to either one of them and you'll find that question. And let's look at some of the vocab that we talked about. We talked about phonological awareness and phonemic awareness. And we looked at activities involving rhymes and phoneme isolation and counting the syllables in, in, in uh, or words spoken in oral language. Team, it's important that when you do this question here that you not only know the answer, the answer C, but that you also um, become familiar with these other people in the cafe. Because I want you to be like, hey, I know the answer is not D, but D happens to be my other friend, my syllable friend, or C uh, or, or B happens to be my other friend involving rhyming text and rhyming words, right? I mean, they don't have to be your enemy. They're just not your friend at this particular question in time. Okay, you get the idea, right? Be familiar, even if the, even though they're the wrong answer, you can still sort of chalk them up to scenarios and activities that might fall under other ideas that you're studying. So it's good to know them. Um, these exams use a lot of the same scenarios over and over again. It's not very original, okay? The things that you do in your classroom, the activities that you do in your classroom, guess what? I mean, half the stuff is very 
it, it, everyone uses. Have, ha, everyone's using morning meeting, right? Everyone's using these things. You're, these are things that are taught every year over and over again. If you've been around, you've seen all these activities before because they're important. So become familiar with the activities and, and you won't be surprised on the day of the test as you navigate through them, okay? All right, let's keep going. Let's go to the next question. 